This is not as loot as I used to remember. Easter Easter banners I used to be a lot more interested in. All right, with all that no. said, though, let's start on the heroes. Quick peek at all their stats. Uthir is looking like a good Lance Cav. Yep. Sonya attack speed defense. Wow. I mean, we already know her stats, but Henry. Henry is as slow oh, as I imagined. <laughs> uh, Maria is really good. And Delthea. All right, we're going to start with Delthea, of course. Continuing yeah. on, she's 163 BST, and I, that's a fine amount. Because she's an 83 offensive bulk, but that's insane, actually. Yeah, it's Delphia. <laughs> yeah, we have, yeah, we definitely have a new Delphia. That's definitely the Delphia stat spread chat. So yeah, she's really, really awfully strong, that combination. So for those who don't want to read that, the Bright Shell Egg is a slaying weapon. It inflicts speed res minus 6 on nearest foes within 5 spaces. It's a super menace skill, as in it has extended range. If bonus is active on unit or penalty is active on foe, inflicts speed res minus six, another further speed res minus six of, uh, of six, sorry. And also the following effects will occur. If greater or equal to six speed, neutralize effects that prevent students' fault attacks. If greater or equal to 18, foe cannot counterattack. And that's pretty nutty because guaranteed, basically, if they're within five range, she's gonna drop that bright shell egg debuff of speed res minus six. And so they can't use wearies against her. And with that, it fully sets up attack speed catch and maximizes the effects of Glimmer because their res is lower, so the magnified damage is higher. And with the SRFR Trace and Rouse attack speed 4, she can go in, attack something, and retreat. Likewise, if she's alone, she gets the extra stats, and that maximizes her ability to uh, prevent counter attacks. This character doesn't make sense. Like, she's ridiculous. Yeah, if you let her be, this is easily one of the best... It, it probably is just the best blue mage offensively right now. I can't think of, like, even Selena isn't exactly as good overall, yep. which is saying a lot. Oh. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm genuinely... I mean, the only thing is that fire sweep condition is a bit steep. <laughs> like, you have to be pretty, like, careful about your buffs and debuffs, especially in, like, a defense setting. But otherwise, it's... A pretty simple weapon just to get everything out of most of the time yeah i agree the one thing that i she can be hit because she doesn't null panic doesn't stop chills and stuff wait wait does it still count if she's chilled um if delthea is yeah yeah it just matters if you have the buff status it doesn't matter if you still have, have the, buff. the buff status right like it doesn't matter if the buff is in use like it doesn't matter if it is in okay. that game rather all right. So, yeah, the only thing she was worried about is panic. And if if she has her uh, C slot or lol, that's right. That could yeah, take it away as well. Like, anything like distant defense for lol attack res, things like that can screw her up. Yeah. Either way, though, it's not hard because if you buff her up, she already gets a guaranteed 12. And if there's any kind of debuff remaining on your opponents, then she's fine. Which is to say she can really quickly and easily set up to her non counter attack status. But you should probably run her with somebody with like, like res tactic or something, right? Like that way it guarantees things. Having any sort of like res tactic, defense tactic, support, or even, I guess on a budget, uh, not necessarily a budget, but you could use like Lou, for example, as it comes to mind as a recent defense buff. Um, anything that can realistically give Delthea a full spectrum would be great. Because at yeah. that point, if they neutralize their penalties, Delthea still has a fallback. Because as long as you have three stats at six, six, 12, 18, um, you'll get your full effects. Whether that's you having three buffs of stats buffed by six, or three buff debuffs by six, you just gotta find a way to get that magic number. I agree. And the big thing here is I, okay, when it comes to her kit, the only thing I'm thinking of switching is her C slot. If you run her by herself and she's sold, with how many years you're running around and now Ninja Corn being guaranteed for everybody, she's gonna get sniped. <laughs> so yeah. I don't like that idea. Yeah. Instead, I would rather just run her next to like another Cav hero and that Cav hero hopefully doesn't have a super special C slot. So I can run like, you know, um, okay. own calves or something and, and then just run a tactic skill behind it or four or five calves or something. But basically the entire idea is like, I wanna just make sure all the stats are there because I think you point this out. If she attacks like Vector or something, it can all just fall apart. Yep. If they're unlucky enough, if you're unlucky enough to find something with distant defense four and slick fighter, you're screwed. But yeah. fortunately, that's not a combination that's all that common. So yeah. I mean, besides like Henriette, if you fight Henriette, you're yeah. just not getting anything. 
but um, otherwise, uh, Delphia should at least be able to rely on one of either her buffs or her foes penalties to get the 18. You just got to make sure at the very minimum you have a good way of spreading one of those two to more stats than just yeah. two. Maybe run her with gun throw or something. Either way, there's a lot of things you guys yeah. can do with her, but her base kit is basically Reef. perfect. Yep. You could run her with like Reef. That's 20 right there. Oh, yeah. Outside Reef of Arfence, I don't see much of a place for her when one of the most common units is Ascended Fjord and a green far save armor with NCD. But the counter argument is one of the most, uh, even more common, I believe, is Hector, Vector, with uh, yeah. none of that. I. I get the idea, yeah, you're gonna get Delphius. I don't even she definitely does not have an Aetherite's offense role. Um, I mean, she does, but so does Regan. Um, I mean, why run Delthea when everyone's getting dual ninja corn, so... Yeah. Just, get, just run New Year's Regan. Um, that said, the, Delthea's Aetherite's defense place is definitely stifled by Fiorm because she can't stop Fiorm's counterattacks and will probably die to a stiff breeze. But... You gotta sometimes, you can't fret over literally every egg. You gotta be able to make some concessions if you want to use a blue mage, for example, to counter, or, or to have a neutral matchup against Bector, or to counter things like Henriette, for example. Not a lot of great red far saves at the moment, or red super tanks in general, but if you want to use a blue mage, then Delthea is gonna have to concede to Fjorm. There, you can't cover for everything, chat, because, no. the, for example, New Dune, what's covering for that? Nothing. Nothing's covering for that. Yeah. So, with all that said, I think she's perfectly fine. The only thing I would say is consider Ruptured Sky, though it would be the best thing to consider. Yeah, I mean... But she doesn't yeah. drop their attack, so it's fine, I guess. It's fine. It, special isn't that important when guards any, around anyways. I'd yeah. say Glimmer is just fine, except yeah. that you probably won't always proc it, but if you do, you got Glimmer. Right. So let's do some comparisons because I think her kit is really clear cut, really good, and she's yep. super cute. Uh, but yep. let's illustrate why she's so good. Yep. I will say, by the way, I think Summoner Duels is the one place I think she'll be fine in the most. Um, that said, I think the most e like upfront comparison to do is um, Selena. First hero comparison, Selena, the Flower Spar, because people do still use her. I still see her like once a week. It's very common unit. Does she still do well against Vector? <laughs> no. That's, that's kind of how I thought about it as well. So, Flowerspar has 40 HP versus Delphia's 36, 4 point advantage for Selena, 39 attack versus 43, 4 point advantage for Delphia, 39 speed versus 40 speed, 1 point advantage for Delphia. She is so much better offensively. 4 attack might not look like a lot until you remember everything else Delphia does, and 4 attack is actually quite a bit. In today's meta, so yeah. 16 defense versus 16 defense, match 23 res versus 28 res, 5 point advantage for Delthea. So Delthea is just marginally better in everything, if not real, significantly better in attack, except for HP, yep. Yep. And for those who forget what the Tome of Storms does, because Selena is now a bit over a year old, um, speed plus 3, attack speed plus 5, and full no follow up if the foe is above 75% HP. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's... So, for comparison, Delthea has a remote penalty. Delthea has slightly more in combat stats. And while she may not have full no follow-up, she exchanges part of it for a uh, uh, sweep effect against everybody. As opposed to having to run wind sweep, like Selena does. Yeah. And of course, while Delthea's condition is not the sweetest condition to meet half the time, Selena literally fails the second the foe is remotely damaged. <laughs> yep. So this is a more consistent, more damage dealing, even faster version of Selena, which is just really depressing. Yeah, if there was ever a depiction of modern day power creep, it's right here. Yeah, the notable mage cap from last year. Bitter Blossom Severo, 39 HP versus 36 HP. Delphi has a three point disadvantage. 37 attack versus 43 attack. Six points? Yeah, Delphi is kidding me? dumb. Delthea yeah. is a attack. Six points difference in the favor of Delthea. 40 speed versus 40 speed matched. 24 defense versus 16 defense. Eight point advantage for Severa. But then again, 
how Delphia is supposed to work. It's not going to matter. 17 res versus 28 res. 11 point advantage for Delphia. Oh, that's not even... This is not okay. Delphia is just significantly better than Severa. Uh, granted, yeah, she can quad potentially, I guess. Yeah, I mean, Severa also can't be screwed by, like, Hardy Bearing, I guess. Or Null C, technically. She'll get her two hit then. Um, Ghoul and Combi Egg is speed res. My, uh, it's either attack speed plus six or speed res minus six on foe. I forget which, but they're basically yeah, the same. You're and right. Slaying with um, basically a brave effect if an ally is already acted. But I believe the foe also has to be above 50% or something like that, which is kind of iffy. That said, Severa basically is a brave tome, but with an arguably even harder condition because the foe has a unit has to attack before she does, which is not easy. Yeah. So, not too far off, but definitely noticeably more complex and not as um, good. Restrictive in usage, especially in the hands of AI. So, this is much better in my eyes. Yeah. And just for some perspective, Delthi has the highest <laughs> attack of mages. <laughs> that surprises me. But she uh, did once upon a time hold the highest attack for mages anyways. This is true. Yeah, she beats out the 42 club of Legendary Lilina, Winter Lysithia, Nime, Nyx, Legendary Micaias, Ion Julia, Happy, and Constance, who all had 42. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, Lysithia. I guess this is the only other close one. Gifted students, Lysithia. 38 HP versus 36 HP. 2 point advantage for Lysithia. 42 attack versus 43 attack. 1 point advantage for Delthea. 40 speed versus 40 speed. Match. 19 defense versus 16 defense. 3 point advantage for Lysithia. 23 res versus 28 res. 5 point advantage for Delthea. So. Fortunately, this is the same generation now. <laughs> yeah. They both have Thea in their names, is what I noticed. <laughs> Yep. And they're all, uh, let's just say, shorter. They're all lollies. There you go, you got it. Yeah, you can literally just... You know what? Let's finish this off with the greatest lolly of them all that we're all gonna have to see soon in Joran. Yes. As Elise. Vinjilis. I guess in Joran, say we have the we have the whole weapons triangle if you include Severa. Yes, I mean they they've really just been pumping out these kind of mages. Yep, it's scary, very scary. <laughs> the Nightfall Ninja at Corin has 38 HP versus 36 HP of Delthea. Two point advantage for Corin. 41 attack versus 43 attack. Two point advantage for Delthea. 40 speed versus 40 speed. Match. 23 defense versus 16 defense. Seven point advantage for Corin. And 20 res versus 28 res. Eight point advantage for Delthea. So they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Not being counterattacked is very different from just quadding chat. You can quad yep. and still die, so. Yeah, quad can still die, yeah. but it, it is a literal, you will not stop Ninjoran from attacking twice. Um, plus there's true damage on top, but on the other hand, less natural attack, may not fulfill the full quad, will get counterattacked if does not kill in two shots. There's trade-off. There's absolutely trade-off. Though on yeah, the other hand, Delphia has to do much more. Yeah, yeah but on the other hand, Delthea is better for the team because she does have a global debuff. That super yeah. menace. That super menace is admittedly a very funky utility that, ironically, Ninjoran and Lysithia can both abuse pretty hard. So, the support aspect is definitely the one thing that makes Delthea unique from literally everybody else. Right, All the mages are to prepare everyone for Reinhardt's refine. I don't think Delthea Shut is going to <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, we're waiting to see <laughs> that. It won't happen. Uh, the Reinhardt refine will be the funniest thing to happen. What All are right. they? They're gonna have to. They're gonna panic when they have to do Reinhardt's refine because it's been way too long. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what they're doing anymore. All right, chat. But to sum it up, because I think that covers all the top tier mages. Yep. Delthea is ridiculous, and if you yep. can get her, you're going to be very happy with her. She's definitely yep. in her league of her own, especially when it comes to blue mages. Mm -hmm. I mean, Selena is in her league, but she's just significantly, clearly better. So, yeah. yeah. Fear the rabbit, she says. We will. But the next hero, the next hero might be the sleeper pick here. Because I actually think Maria, if in the right hands, with the right teams, with the right setup, with the right buildup, is actually a terrifying hero. So the sunny smile Maria, or Maria, I always say Maria like Mario, I don't know why. 
35 HP, 37 attack, 40 speed, 40 defense, 25 res with 177 BST. I'm surprised she doesn't have a speed super boon. I am too. Yeah, that's kind lie. of weird. I mean, so, yeah. No. I mean, from her stat perspective, it's already weird because 25 HP, what? And yeah. 25 managed to somehow squeeze out 25 res. Like, I, I can't say I'm I'm expecting that. Yep. I why well, why well, was expecting low res, but I mean, it's a wire 25 flyer. though, that's not like 17 low. Yeah, but she has a new gen hero, and she has does have 35 HP. We did talk about and, this because we're like, where well, is she gonna go? Has 37 and 40 offenses. Her offenses are surprisingly like just okay. Yeah, I it's mean, lighter I than I expected. Really good, but it's not like, whoa. Yeah. Hmm. All right, well, really quickly, she has Pastel Poleaxe, which is neutralized effect against flying, defense plus three, at start combat, immunity HP is over 25%, grants attack speed, defense res plus five units during combat, deals damage equals 20% of units defense, reduces damage from foes attacks by 20% of units defense, um, excluding AOE specials, and then restores 7 HP to unit and allies within two spaces after combat. It's really long. It does a lot, and it's really, really good for her. Yep, essentially, the, the short of it is stats, damage reduction, but not percentage base, which is distinct. Um, healing, or sorry, um, yeah, healing it's after healing. combat, and then also bonus dam true damage. Yep. And it's also and then, slightly supportive. Right, slightly supportive. She also has Rally Speed Defense Plus, Attack Defense Push, and more importantly, Flow Flight. The new flow skills are ridiculous. First coming yep. to Cavs and now to Flyers, and this is definitely more important because Pegasus Flight and Wyvern Flight are basically useless. Flow Flight, however, is something else. If you initiate combat, neutralize effects that prevent units' fall attacks during combat and allies. Uh, and also, if units' speed is over or equal to foe speed minus 10. She is a pseudo dodge tank that you can't fight with traditional means. I think that alone is insane. She is insane. This is the thing. Flow Flight is really good. I, people are going to place it on a lot of heroes. But she's like meant for this. Like she's just meant yeah. for it. Still a flight skill. So the unit, like the pool of units that can use this, is not that great. But the fact that it's still got that heart partial no follow up no matter what, yeah, at least makes it better to use than most. Yes, you know, any flight skill. Right. She deals damage during combat equals seventy percent of difference between defense stats, units defense minus foes attack, as well as reduce damage from foes attacks by seventy percent of the, the of that difference. So she can what reduce damage by up to seven percent, or um, sorry, seven. seven, seven, yeah, yeah. It's a maximum seven for each, pretty sure. Which is so, basically the same way flight does it, like the normal flight skills do it, but instead of reducing and increasing attack, it's true damage and um, damage reduction. Yeah, and damage. only on initiation. So this is really yep. interesting when she's ran like this, because nowadays I really think you want trace unless you're going all in. But you only go all in when you do Gale Force, but she doesn't have Sling, so she's not really perfect she for that either. Gale Force. Yeah. I mean, she can, but her attack is not Heavy Blade worthy. Yes. So, so it's really weird. This position that they put Maria in is just, what is she meant to do? Because I can see her being like a great hero for like Arena Cell, but for the specialty functions, right? Like, yeah. for Gale like Forcing. Yeah. She is absolutely great at just killing things. What, what I find stupid is that she has 30 natural res not what i expected um with her axe that said yep. she's basically supposed to be a duelist go in kill something then what yeah then you, what you killed That's... them you lived you healed you're there now <laughs> yeah but she can't stay engaged because that flow flight doesn't work on the defensive phase of only nope. 35 hp and 25 res if she takes a mage shot she's pretty dead I mean, she could take a mage shot because her axe still provides damage. Okay, she, like, fair two, enough, two, but three. She doesn't have that much speed. Forty-five speed nowadays at just base. Ooh. I mean, it can work. Um, it can work. It's just uh. Modern mages mage will shred her though. Yeah. <sighs> Most of the mages that have been released recently probably would. Yeah. Unless you were to specifically go in on her speed, which for some reason she One doesn't. One notable difference is that this flight hilarious. seems she to use in combat slot. stats, which is much better than Wyvern, yes. which is visible Komodo hype. Yep. Wyvern and Pegasus are both visible, which is why they're never like caught on. They're, they're terrible in comparison to skills. Like, it can work, but realistically, it was just easier to use Trace. Yeah. 
So really quickly, this is I'm so conflicted. If she had more attack and more speed, I would be much more have much more faith. For that reason, I would have wished that res was actually lower. But um, because I mean, she doesn't even have a super boon in speed, and she does need a defense. Like you're going to go yeah. plus defense, but then the speed portion of this is really suspect. And or yeah, you, yeah. you, mm -hmm. she should at least have come with a rain skill for like speed, yeah. something with speed. I mean, she'll probably be fine if you actually, you know, spec her for the speed. Best. They sure didn't. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, chat, I'm really conflicted. If you fought her, who would it be for? Fought her? Uh, name Any the Waveman Rider miniature you like Minerva. Most? Yeah, Mini Minerva is probably the only other one that I think Which... Flow Flight is cleanly worse and on. How much worse is Young Minerva than Maria? Genuinely. I mean, I know the condition on Minerva sucks. But I think as a Gale Forcer, I take her. Yeah, she has a Slaying Axe and Guard, and while she doesn't get five dolls, sets, she still gets four. Okay, we'll do that four comparison in a four. moment, so we'll get back to that. But really yeah. quickly, chat, for the build here, I think you need the defense, but you also need the speed, so do you go... Steady at minimum, you go back. speed defense solo on your seal, and oh, yeah. ideally, you get, like, speed, uh, speed defense rain as well. But that's yeah, so expensive. Uh, speed death rain is not the worst. Get they they're perpetuating it quite a bit. It's um, not the worst, but like, what are you gonna do? Kill Lin for it? Dual Lin? It's not accessible. No, I mean rains aren't accessible in general yet. Yeah, so that's the thing. Sucks. It's gonna take commitment to build her, and I, and for a hero with a stat line like this, it's kind of disappointing. I was really looking forward to her. Yeah, I, I think she'll absolutely work in the right hands. Like, her weapon is still fantastic. It's just... Her role is confusing. <laughs> yep. It... I don't know why, but I'm getting, like... It fe The stat side feels very similar to Rinka for some reason. No, uh, we can Rinka do that comparison. Uh, yes. I, um, I don't know. But I, I guess the attack side, she's surprisingly low attack is the thing that gets me. Yeah. Which Catch me off guard. All right, hmm. all right. Let's do some comparisons to uh, try and set what she's supposed to do. But chat, this one is not so clear cut. Princess Knight Minerva versus Sunny Small Maria. I really hope uh. Minerva still stays good because if she's the best Wyvern flyer in her family with Mechalix and Minerva, uh, no, please no. That doesn't make any sense to me. So no. please hold up, well, Minerva. Oh, oh, yeah. Doesn't that feel weird? 40 HP versus 35 HP, 5 point advantage for Minerva, 36 attack versus 37 attack. Wow, this is only a 1 point advantage from for that's Mario. That's actually depressing because if you include the dragon flowers there, that's not a win. <laughs> it's not a win. 37 speed versus 40 speed, 3 point advantage for Mario, 35 yeah. defense versus 40 defense, 5 point advantage for Mario, 19 res versus 25 res. She has a huge advantage in res of, of 6. Yeah, but... and the defense is noticeable. But she doesn't have as much HP, and Minerva doesn't necessarily use the defense for anything besides Bonfire. Uh, I'm just gonna say, I prefer Minerva. Straight up, I prefer Minerva. Her condition still like... sucks. You literally have to fight a full health opponent, or else she has those slaying axe, and that's it. But I do think Minerva is my preferred unit as well, in a lot of cases. Yeah, and I think for me at least, it's just like... You'll get, but unless you're like a heavy whale and you want to pull for Maria, like you're probably going to get maybe one or two copies of her compared to Minerva, who is free. Yeah, yep. you get the full plus 10. Yeah, you can't use um, her signature Ace Light Dragoon shield if you're running G-Dual Flying, but she's still free to plus 10 and still does pretty well. And even if you were damage, uh, fighting a damaged opponent, you still have a slaying effect. So, like, that nope. slaying is yeah. infinitely valuable in this meta. So here's what I gotta say. I think in at this point in the game, you can't just have a journalist. They gotta be specialized. Be really, really good at one thing. I'm not sure what she's good at. If she could survive on both phases, then yes, she's a really good generalist or a dual phaser. But she can't. She's really good on one phase. And second phase, enemy phases, she's a lot more vulnerable. Not a lot more, but substantially She loses her B-slot, so it... Yeah, she loses her B-slot, but she does still have 20% of her defense um, as reduction, which well, by default... Well, her is... lower res makes me worry about that. I can't just I... throw her in. No, but 
it, by default, she's reducing um, her damage by Yeah, not, I'm, I'm, aware. Um, damage I'm, by I'm nine, aware. I'm aware. So. I'm aware. I'm aware. The thing is, with 40 speed, you got to somehow build enough speed that the mage doesn't double her. Yeah. So there's a lot, like, there's just so many things to worry about when you're using her. Whereas with, like, Minerva, I, I go in Gale Force. I know, where, I know where this is going, you know? Yeah. Yeah, honestly. I mean, there is the argument to just switch the bees left trace, but... But once you do that, why use her anymore? It falls quite a bit, like... Yeah, that's, that's the thing. I just don't know who would want to use her and for what reasons. Most... If you're a Maria fan, then I guess... That's yeah. that would have to be it, but yeah, that that that's a that's very small group of people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I've built heroes for less. So devoted darkness Morgan has 40 HP, which is 35 HP, five point advantage for Morgan, 39 attack versus 37 attack, two point advantage for Morgan, 17 speed versus 40 speed, uh, 23 point advantage for Maria, but this doesn't really matter. 41 defense versus 40 defense, one point advantage for Morgan, 35 res versus 35 res. Um. I would rather use Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people would. Like, yes, Morgan does not like no follow up in the slightest, but Slang X, Guard, reliable, pretty easy conditions if you're not dealing with no follow up to get both your double and prevent doubles. It's just a pretty simple unit to use, especially with the self synergetic attack death menace and dive bomb. Yeah, and not a f of course slang. Yeah. Now she Morgan does not heal her allies. But no. Morgan does have menace and that does help, so there's that. And Morgan ironically will not hit necessarily as hard or tank as much in one hit as Maria. But the heavy blade checks a little easier and the attack I mean the slang makes it so you don't even have to get counter attack for a gale force. And the other thing about Morgan is just bonfires. Hmm? much easier to build. Arya is missing a lot of the kit. Yeah, yeah, M like you literally, what now? You change your A slot to catch if you feel like it. You don't need to change your B slot or C I don't slot. Want to, I don't want to talk about it. This, this, this is getting more and more of a disappointment. Jill, Jill's other one. The Fire Draco Knight has 40 HP versus 35 HP. Uh, 5 point advantage for Jill, 39 attack versus 37 attack, 2 point advantage for Jill, 40 speed versus 40 speed. Are you kidding me? How old is Jill? Match. Um, a little more than a year ago. 36 defense versus 40 defense, 4 point advantage for Maria, 17 res versus 25 res. Congrats, you beat her by 8 res. I would rather use Jill, because Jill is, can attack oh, twice. Speed defense rain. <laughs> yeah. And has speed defense rain, and attack speed push. Like, holy crap, I would just rather use Jill. Yeah, Talragan Axe is also ridiculous. I think people kind of forget that weapon is amazing. Slaying, attack speed 6, and a forced desperation just by initiating. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. How like, would you allocate Mario's stats? If I can transfer uh, 8 of that res into more attack and more speed, I would have done that. Yeah. I mean, at least, like, 2 or 3 more attack and 2 more speed. Yeah. Then I would be a lot more happier. Because you can see the problem, chat. She's losing to Jill. You shouldn't be losing to Jill. You came a year later, year plus later. I mean, Wait, and it's also Jill? seasonal. Jill is yeah, also from seasonal. September 2020, 20, uh, 21. Yeah, 2020 flat spread. Oh um, my God. September. Okay, one and a half years. That is oh not good. That is. I mean, Maria wants to be a mixed tank somehow. That's the one thing that she's going for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen, chat, like, I wanted the world for her, but she's not it. Uh, in fact, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you can salvage her to make her, like, like, great. I mean, I, I think she's kit. good. <laughs> I think she's good. But the kit, the kit's lacking. The character stat distribution's lacking. Just a little bit. Not having the slang, roles. I think it's a real criminal criminality here. Ugh. All right. Anyways, I think that's enough about her. It's very clear cut. I she's a disappointment. That's the unfortunate thing. Yeah. I mean, when I saw that, I already knew this was not going to be a unit that gets used, even if her stat line is good. I just knew this was not going to work. It, yeah. It's still can. It still can, and I think that people who try with Maria, like actually try, they'll find something. But 
Yeah, there's a the reason The question is how many people would actually even bother there. with that. Should have taken a hint with that lower damage, honestly. Massive, massive Don fans, Maria fans. <laughs> All yeah. five of them. Henry! The peculiar egg Henry has 41 HP, 37 attack, 27 speed, 40 defense, and 23 res. He's our four star hero chat, so don't get fooled by this kit. It's ass, and it's supposed to be ass because they don't really I mean, care too much about it. Rally Ruse but is pretty sick, though. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to fodder him, to be honest. With that said, though, you can see Bane in HP and speed, and he has 27 speed, but boons in defense and res. He's a very interesting archer. Very unorthodox. Extremely unusual archer. He's like Gordon on a horse, you know? <laughs> it is. Yeah. He, oh, yeah, very, it's so weird. Yeah, go, mm, Gordon on a horse definitely would be a fair. I feel like there's an archer that almost follows the stat line to a T, and I can't remember it for some reason. It also kind of feels like Roy, but the, like that's so better. old at this point. I mean, it is Roy, but better at the very least. Yeah, it's Roy, but better. Okay, so really quickly, chat, this kit, you know what it does. Carrot Tip Bow is the only thing worth discussing here. And I'm a bigger fan of Plegian Bow. We had this discussion already, so I'm not going to go over it again. But basically, it can potentially do more damage than Plegian Bow, but it will not keep you as safe as Plegian Bow. And yeah. the only benefit over Plegian Bow that's absolute is that you don't have to be solo while using it. But when you're a Cav Archer, how much do you care about that? Because you can move really easily. I mean, when it comes to the Inheritance Factor, it becomes a different story, but for Cav Archers in particular, Plegian is just easy. Yeah. He is good fodder, though. If you want, yeah. I think it's verified that Rally Defense Res Plus, you still have to five-star him, but if you want to fodder him, he's pretty good. Oh yeah, no, fa fantastic fodder pathing, I can't lie. And lest I be mistaken, uh, the Ruse is demoted, so that's great. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so very, if you just needed Arena Unit, pick him up. <laughs> yep. Very, so, yeah, it is demoted. So with all that said, I, if I just did a basic build on him, 37 attack is not bad. He's a four star hero chat, so we'll keep that in mind. So we're, we're not gonna raise him to such higher levels. So yeah. I would say for me, it's just be a really simple build of like Brave Bow, Death Blow, you know? Yeah. Just maybe a trace if I'm feeling really generous for him and then just like what, attack smoke or something? Cause 40 defense means he can actually survive even if he gets doubled. Like it's really, be yeah. something simple. Give him yeah, bonfire. That's the big thing. Yeah. yeah, simple little things. I mean, the big thing with Henry is um, that defense. I, I mean, here's the thing with his attack. Uh, just as a slow, like small spoiler, uh, he has only one more attack than Summer Leone, who then has more dragon flowers. So if you fully invest, Leone will hit just as hard on the Brave Bow uh. build. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> So you're lo looking more so at that 13 extra defense as like the big thing Henry has going for the ability to actually survive counterattacks. Okay, so then got to revise that because I do think I do think he's a good plegian bow with like If you if you had unlimited budget chat, you could go like plegian bow um gatekeeper's a slot, what is it called again? A uh, close reversal. Close you reversal. Nothing wrong or with close it. fall, yeah, that's a. Gr I agree with that as well. Um, might as well run a trace or something and B still, and then for C, just run attack, defense, menace, and you basically make a plegian. Like it, it would fit him very much, and it would work, but like expensive. Yeah. But why would you want to do it? It's what I would think about. Realistically, unless you're trying to like just turn him into an initiate that can take a physical shot, but realistically, is either about one shotting with his base bow or using a brave bow. Um, yeah. You're trying to turn them into a tank, which yep. cav tanks, let alone ranged cav tanks, are a little weird. <laughs> Needless to All say. Right. Let's do some comparisons, because I think that's what's really important here. Mm -hmm. The Unifier of Thracia Leaf has 40 HP versus 41 HP, 1 point advantage for Henry, 38 attack versus 37 attack, 1 point advantage for Leaf, 22 speed versus 27 speed, 5 point advantage for Henry, 29 defense versus 40 defense, 11 point advantage. Henry, and then 27 res versus 23 res, 4 point advantage for Leaf. So you are right, this is close, but the thing with Leaf is he's a legendary and he, Meister Bogan is stupid. Dual phase Brave Bow that also has impact if used by the player, which is the only weapon that yep. ever has done that, by the way. Yep. Yep. 
combine that with s drink and the stupid thing that is newer in zeal giving gale force as a ranged unit on three cooldown yeah um, leaf has a couple things going for him that henry never will <laughs> so basically yeah. it comes down to the fact that leaf has four more res and one more attack that's like the only thing that i find valuable there but henry has way more defense so you are right you know what this is basically just leaf if you really yeah. want to you can make a crappier version of leaf with henry and literally I... you can just get literally brave bow <laughs> yeah just brave bow yeah you miss out on everything everyone. else unfortunately yeah that's the brave bow is the only thing that would kind of get henry to this level of relevance yeah. the awkward thing is there are so few calves like henry and they're not good for a reason <laughs> yep like here let me look here the only other one is Roy that's this slow because fun fact besides Roy and Leaf every other calf at least has seven more speed than Henry if not more yeah so, this is an old school unit uh I'm not even gonna name this out he's just yeah. Henry's just a better Roy that's yeah I was ideal. gonna say Roy's a worse Leaf so not gonna be a better Henry <laughs> but he was like the first Brave Bow Archer that like everyone got recommended like that was like the secret promise to him oh yeah and the one thing it. roy really could do was brave bow archer because unfortunately uh lynn already existed so he needed to make a roll out of that bulk oh. but, all right i'm gonna just do a quick know. gordon check because uh this is only our other unit it's he's not a cav okay but 43 hp versus 41 hp two point advantage for gordon 31 attack versus 37 attack six point advantage for henry 25, 25 speed versus 27 speed, 2 point advantage for Henry, 32 defense versus 40 defense, 8 point advantage for Henry, and then 17 res versus 23 res, 6 point advantage for Henry. But the thing is, Gordon makes up for the attack because he has a perf bow. Yep, yep. perf weapon that is a brave bow with attack death rain in it. Yeah, so he makes up for basically the attack and defense. Heck, even the res. They're, yeah, Henry essentially is just Gordon on a horse. Basically, which that has its advantages, absolutely. But it is kind of funny to think that Gordon still kind of almost keeps up, even if Gordon is very, 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 very old at this point. That is one of the earliest refines. Are you feeling okay, Legion, for suggesting this? Are you sure? There are so... the comparisons suck with this one. Henry is unusual. <laughs> yeah, he's... Raphael's also like three times the size of Henry. You realize that, right? Indeed. I mean, even in the he's army. an armor unit by muscle alone. <laughs> yeah. The funny part is you probably want to fodder off Raphael for Henry, for the ideal Henry, but uh, let's keep going. 48 yep. HP versus 41 HP, 7 point advantage for Raphael. Uh, 42 attack versus 37 attack, 5 point advantage for Raphael. 28 speed versus 27 speed, 1 point advantage. 38 defense versus 40 defense, 2 point advantage for Henry, and then 23 res versus 23 res is a match. Sorry, where did this come from again? This is so weird. Well, besides the fact that barring their first two stats, they're almost identical. Uh, colorless archers released one year after the other and have the same kind of idea of abusing penalties to the moon, like you said, Pledging Bow. But obviously, Henry does not have the attack. Raphael does, and more importantly, the move type is much better for Raphael in this kind of stat line. Cavalry. Wait, what? Can, you, what? Henry would use the Pledging Bow better, though. He would for the solo condition. I can't argue yeah. that. But Raphael is a much better archer tank from the respect that he's in armor in the first place. Okay. And also a better Brave Bow user because bolt fire. Yes, and 42 attack. All right, yeah. fair enough. Anyways, I don't think there's much to say about Henry. I know I'll see some of him because Henry has a lot of fans. Yeah, Henry does have fans, but... This is one of the weirdest emotes we've ever had in recent memory.